guys, I'm Liz and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Quick Journey. I'm so excited that you guys are here today. So if you're new, definitely subscribe, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you would like for me to share here on The Quick Journey in the upcoming weeks. Today, I have a really fun topic that I'm gonna be talking about. It's something that I really enjoy and I'm gonna share it with you guys. I'm gonna walk you through a few things that I find um, helpful when it comes to inspiration for my home and I hope that you guys will enjoy this. This is a bit different from other things I share here, but you know, I thought maybe you guys would like it too, especially as we are heading into the fall and winter seasons, which um, are my very favorite times to use these books. So anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna go put her away and then I will share with you the books that I constantly am flipping through, the books that I love when it comes to home decor inspiration and just finding my own design style here in our home. Today, I am gonna share all about some of my favorite design books. I have quite a few throughout my home. I look for them whenever I go to bookstores and whenever I go to antique stores because you can find a lot of really great older design books whenever you go to thrift stores and to antique stores. So definitely add those to your list if this is something that you think you would like to have in your home. Um, so I love design books because you really get a chance to see those styles and trends that have kind of stood the test of time. I used to always like to have my home be super trendy and then I found that I could not keep up with it. Like, I never loved my home. I would love it for a hot second and then it would be done and I would see a different design trend and feel like I needed to start moving in that direction. So I, I feel like I never arrived. And while we might not ever totally arrive, I feel like when you decorate with more of a classic foundation to your home decor, then it never really fully goes out of style. Maybe you change or tweak little things here or there, but it always looks nice and inviting and cozy and it looks pulled together. So that's kind of what I've done with this home. We have lived in several homes and I kind of went trendy with every other home that we were in, made it super stylized with um, whatever I could find at thrift stores and antique stores and in Target and things like that. And this home, I have taken it really slowly and I have kind of honed in on what I want my home to look like and the feeling I want it to have when whenever people walk through my front door. And that has taken time, that has taken some trial and error, that has taken me figuring out what I love and what I don't love. The tip that I would leave with you is that there are styles that you can appreciate and you can look at and think, oh, that is really lovely. But it doesn't mean you want to live in it. And that took me a while to figure out. For example, one time we went and stayed at some cabins and they were so beautiful and cozy and rustic and I loved it. And I ended up wanting to change all of my fixtures to this oil rubbed bronze. Like it was kind of a, a burnt, coppery color except a little more brownish red and very rustic and cabin-esque and I loved it. I thought it was the coziest thing ever so I started changing things in our home to that oil rub bronze and then I ended up realizing oh I like visiting cabins with oil rub bronze. I don't want my home to look like a cabin with a bunch of oil rub bronze and that was a really eye-opening moment for me when I finally realized that I can appreciate what other people do with their homes, but it might not be that that is what I need to do with my home. So that is where these design books come into play for me. I can flip through them, I can appreciate some design elements, and then I can really see, okay, what are those design elements that I see that I like over and over and over again that I want to pull into my own home. This takes a little bit longer than just going through the aisles of Target and buying some stuff and putting it in your house. Um, there is a time and place for that, especially in the holidays and things like that when we just want to add a little bit of flair and festivity to our home. Um, or even if we're wanting to bring in some trends and we don't want to spend a lot and we know that it's not going to last forever, so we just add and sprinkle it a little here and there. But but what I am gonna be talking about today is 
how to find things that you really love that are gonna stand the test of time, that are gonna form the foundation of your home decor for years to come. And the way I do that is by flipping through design books over and over and over again. I have quite a few design books and I keep them on my coffee table. Um, I pull them over onto my lap when I'm sitting on the sofa and flip through them when I'm bored. A lot of the times I do that in the winter. For some reason I love looking through these books in the winter time, probably because we're spending a lot of time inside. Um, and what they've shown me is how to layer textures, how to bring in old and new, how to have simple and sophisticated married together, you know, how to bring in masculine and feminine and just create this really pretty textured home that has a little bit of everything, but it all looks good together. So that is really what I am enjoying. That is what I'm trying to create here in our home. And I wanna share a few books with you that have helped me to do that. So one author that I love, is Roz Byam Shaw. I don't know if it's Ross or Roz. I'm gonna say Roz. And she has a series of books and they're all perfect. They're perfect English, perfect French, um, perfect English townhouse, perfect French country. Like she has a collection of books and they're all talking about different aesthetics and styles that people might want. And one thing I love about it is Roz goes into homes where people actually live and she shares how they create this beautiful collected home. And you take what's outside and you bring it in and you also take what's inside and you marry it with what's outside and it just creates this perfect palette. She goes in and shares how you can have an unfussy home um, that has maybe tattered chairs but th that just has so much character and cozy feeling to it and you don't even notice the tears. Like you just notice the textures and the patterns and the colors and how they all look good together. And I really like how she shares that in these books and she shares different aesthetics. So for example, this one is French country. So you're gonna have a lot more white and chippy paint and you're gonna have rustic chairs sitting by the kitchen table and you're gonna have you know, more of the tattered look and aged, worn out rugs on the floor. You're gonna have lots of old uh, floors, stone floors, tile floors. You're gonna have old um, wood floors, just all kinds of things. And the homes aren't gonna be perfect. You also learn from her books that part of what's charming about the homes that she's sharing with us is nothing is perfectly square. The door frames aren't perfectly square. Maybe the windows aren't perfectly square. So the flooring, there's some pictures where she shows that they have a piece of wood under a dresser leg because the floor in that home is not square. And so it's just fun to flip through and see how people take something that a lot of us in the modern day would consider not worth putting time and energy into, and they make it this beautiful, charming place to live. So I just love, it really helps me step outside of my comfort zone when it comes to design. It helps me to marry my desire for sophistication. I like a really sophisticated look, and just to take it more simple and rustic and comfy. And I really, really like that and appreciate that about her design. So there are a lot of things I love um, about these books. And I don't take everything. This is one of those examples where um, I love a lot of the things that are shared in these books, but I don't necessarily want to live with that. So I take certain aspects um, that I do see and notice that I like over and over and over again, and I bring that into my home. For example, my mirror over my fireplace I got from a lot of her French books. Um, and I love, I just love these big gold gilded mirrors, and that is a look that I am wanting to go for in my home. So another one she has is a perfect English farmhouse. And this is about cozy fireplaces, lots of exposed brick. You have charming cottage, um, you know, kitchens and gardens. You have exposed wooden beams on your ceilings. Um, you have stone window sills instead of having the wooden casings on window sills. Uh, a lot of smaller window frames instead of big window frames, clawfoot tubs, just a lot of the typical things you would see 
in an English farmhouse. Um, lots of like robin egg blue, lots of yellows, lots of rose and floral patterns. Just beautiful, beautiful textures throughout the home that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see here in the States, especially in modern homes. You just don't see that kind of texture very often. For example, this one. I love that red chair. I just love how pretty I love spindled legs and casters. So that's something that I'm always taking inspiration from, from these books and wanting to bring in. There are lots of floral arrangements and things happening in English farmhouses. And so she shares that in that book. Another one is the perfect English style. This is a bit more sophisticated um, as opposed to the perfect English farmhouse, which is way more, I don't know, attainable and just chill. I don't know how else to say it. Just, I don't know, come in from the farm and enjoy your home kind of thing. Whereas this perfect English style is more of a cottage um, type look. So you have greens and you still have some reds. You have lots of open bookcases. That's a big feature in, um, in English cottages and lots of, I noticed that this book also shares a lot of gallery walls and things like that. You have big um, paintings and then you also have plate walls and plate racks. This is a huge feature of the English style. You'll have beautiful staircase. have a really humble staircase that is beautiful at the same time. So lots of tiling. You'll get lots of interesting tiling in the English the English cottage, whether it be in the kitchen or in, in this case up the stairway or the checkered tile that you'll see on floors. So this is a book that I really love and obviously uh, wallpaper is making a huge comeback and that's very English. Wallpaper is a very English thing. Another thing that I'm wanting to bring into my home in the next year is more fabrics on my windows, maybe in Roman shades or curtains or something, just pattern and color and fabrics. Now, another one is The Perfect English Townhouse and this was the first book of Roz's that I purchased and I love, for example, right here on the cover, you can see it. there is a settee type chair and it's sunken in in the middle. It is far from perfect, but it is so lovely. The patterns and the texture and just the history, like who sat there? How many people have sat there and had a cup of tea and just shared stories with one another and I just love that so much. So you have the perfect English townhouse and this walks you through lots of beautiful homes where people have taken what was already there and made it perfect and beautiful um, and livable for this time too. My next author that I have fallen in love with um, when it comes to style and decor in the home. And as you can see, I have both of these books I've read multiple times or flipped through multiple times and um, I am flipping through them again and <laughs> I'm still working my way through. It is Gil Schaefer. He is an architect and works with designers and takes homes and brings them back to life and works with the owners just to make it a place where they want to live for the next, you know, generation or whatever. So I love it. It's traditional style and it's classic. You, a lot of it is just your typical Southern style, just elevated. And I, I love it so much because I feel like he does a really great job marrying masculine and feminine and just bringing the simple and the sophisticated together in a really beautiful, beautiful way. So these books are new to me. I bought them in the last year, but I flipped through them many, many times. I love how he uses indoors to help create a space that from the inside to the outside, he, he doesn't stop that your eye to go out the windows in the doors, like they're open. And I love, one thing I love about his style would be his um, window treatments. I love the bamboo blinds that he uses and I've been looking for them and they're actually quite expensive to be honest and so I haven't purchased any yet. I love how he shows 
the details in his books. He shows how to um, update your, your casings around your doors, how to take hinges and doorknobs, and even your fireplace surrounding, and just make it say something about the space. It's a subtle thing, but it's, a, it's something that matters and it changes the design. I love that he keeps things classic even in the kitchen. Maybe he'll change the paint color, but everything is really classic and just timeless. Something that you're gonna love for years to come and that's really what I'm wanting. Changing your home is so expensive and changing out decor all the time, so I'm really hoping to create a style in the home we're in that we will love for years and years to come. So he does a lot of islands in the center of kitchen, lots of shaker cabinets. He uses what the home has and just makes it more beautiful. For example, beadboard on the walls and wallpaper. He pays attention to the lighting and attention to detail like that can just make or break a space. So I really enjoy how he does that. One thing that I notice about Gill's spaces is that he has little spots to sit and congregate and chat all over every room. Maybe there is a table in the middle of the dining room and then he has two chairs, you know, flanking a window at the end of the dining room where people can also sit and chat in a cozy chair. He'll have a living room and then with a couch and a sofa and a fabric, you know, ottoman as a coffee table. And then he'll also have a window seat and next to a window in the living room. So there are all these little pockets of places to be able to sit and chat and just, I don't know, fellowship with one another. And I really, really love that. I love that there are these unsuspected little cozy places in each room that he creates. And that is something that I am kind of bringing into my own home. You think about, oh, we need a coffee table in the living room and let's have a couch and a chair. But I don't often think about, oh, there's a corner where I could put something and maybe, you know, drink a cup of coffee in the morning from that chair and you know, get a different view of the room or look out the window or maybe my kids will curl up with a book in that chair um, and that corner was empty prior. So I'm starting to fill up those little spaces. Interesting to see how when you carefully fill these little areas with texture and color and warmth, it changes the entire room. And that has been so much fun for me to see because I used to think that you needed everything to be white and sterile and don't have too many things laying around because it'll look cluttered. And I'm starting to learn that layering in the right way creates a beautiful palette and space for your family to live in. Another thing that I am learning and that I am working on in my own home is to create things on tabletops, vignettes, to have blankets that are available for people to sit and cozy up with, to have plenty of pillows, um, to have artwork on the walls, you know, a gallery wall, maybe have something interesting like a, an umbrella holder full of canes and old umbrellas sitting by the front door. Just these little areas just to create interest and texture and also be functional for some some situations. Like a blanket on the couch is always going to be functional at certain times during the year. But I'm just learning how adding little bits here and there doesn't clutter the space. It actually brings it all together and makes it feel more and more inviting. And that is something that Gil Schaefer's books have taught me. I hope that this shows you how fun and important it is to have books that you can just thumb through and look through that have timeless and classic decor in it that you can kind of add to your home right now and it can see you through the years to come and you can add and take away as you need to, but you'll have this great foundation that you can build and change things on throughout the years without changing everything in your home with every you know, passing trend. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little look into my coffee table books. I will link them down in the description box below so you can see all the ones that I love so much. I truly go through these books multiple times a year. My kids even love looking through them. Um, I have them scattered everywhere. These are just a few of my favorites and these are the ones that sit on our coffee table 
all year long because inevitably I'll have a moment where I get a chance to sit in the afternoon and I just want to be inspired and see something beautiful. I love online platforms. I love looking on Instagram and seeing, you know, a lot of the design trends happening on there, but there's something about sitting and having a still image, which that is hard to come by these days online. I like having a still image that I can just sit and really soak up the whole thing. It's given me a bit of boldness when it comes to my own home. I mean, I have a pink velvet sofa and a blue velvet sofa and then a wicker chair. And I would have never done that if it hadn't been for these design books showing me that I could do things differently and not have to have it be all monochromatic. So this has been a great tool to help me step out of my design comfort zone and also be able to hone in on the style that I think um, makes up my home. Hey guys, that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this walk through the books that I love, this walk through my house and things that I have added in the last few years to give my home an old world European meets classic Americana vibe. I hope that you have a really good day. If you are new here, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below letting me know what elements you love to put in your home and I will see you back here next week. Bye.